Okay, so let me to introduce myself. My name is Piotr Chopik. It's a hard second name. Um, I'm working for a company called Clico. We are a Polish distributor of, I believe, the best available security solutions on the market. I'm personally responsible for things like Rapid7, Checkpoint, and Tufin. And I'm also working as a security auditor in Clico. And that's the main reason one why I'm here. And today I would like to show you uh, two pretty cool tools that we are using during our uh, audits. And not only because my further friend uh, Federico from Rapid7 forced me to say this, but also we think that they are really good tools. Um, and they can be basically used in every environment. Uh, we need to start with a little bit of... Uh, theory, and then we'll go to the practical part. Uh, since we are talking about the vulnerability cycle, let's take a look at a uh, cycle and let's go through the each five steps. So, to work with vulnerabilities, uh, first of all, we need to identify them, okay? So we will be using uh, scanners, uh, like next polls, like things that Sergey was showing to you guys. Um, if we get that knowledge about vulnerabilities, we should prioritize, prioritize them. Uh, we need to create a plan uh, for which vulnerability we should take care of first, what can wait for uh, a little bit uh, more time. Uh, then there is the hardest part, a part for ethical hackers, for security auditors, we need to try to take advantage of that vulnerability. And if we have that full picture about vulnerabilities and how it is easy to take advantage of them, we can go to things like reporting stuff to our management, uh, creating some remediation plans, then we are going to uh, things like installing patches, uh, downloading newer version of softwares and things like that. And after that job is done, uh, unfortunately we need to go to the first point and we need to start the whole thing uh, from the beginning. And uh, two tools that I will be showing you today, Nextpulse and Metasploit in pro version, did you know that there is a pro version of Metasploit, uh, can give you a really nice and really, uh, can be really helpful during that cycle. And I would like to show you today how you can uh, make uh, many things much faster by using those two great tools. So let's start with, oh, that's a cool animation. Uh, there are random, so I have no idea what will be the next one. Uh, let's start with uh, security scanner first. So the Rapid7 security scanner is called Nextpose. It's basically a scanner that gives you a chance to scan everything that has an IP address from the server through your PCs, Macs, uh, any kinds of different machines, even through your mobile devices. And after each scan, you will be able to see uh, what is the risk score, what is the CVSS score, what severity of the vulnerability uh, was uh, assigned to each of uh, discovered vulnerabilities, and to automate uh, some things, you will get also an information if there are available, for example, that red icon here, if that are available uh, malware kits, so if there is a available malware that can take advantage of that vulnerability. Uh, you can also read from that slide if there is a uh, Metasploit module available, uh, that things that Sergey was uh, showing to you by using Armitrage. It's pretty cool, but it is really random one, okay? So with that tool, you will get a specific, do we have a, something to, pointer or something? Yeah. Uh, if you see that icon, that means that there is a Metasploit module available. If you're clicking that uh, icon, you will get a nice redirection to Rapid7 page with information which exactly, uh, which module you should uh, use. There is a, a short introduction of that module, uh, just a simple information about uh, some options. And also, if you see icon like this one, there will be an information that there is an also uh, exploit available in exploit DB. 
Are you using ExploitDB? Who knows that page? Except you guys, I know you, you are using it a lot. So for those guys that are not familiar with that page, this is a public, a huge repository of any kinds of exploits that are available on the market, let's say, with uh, source code available. So uh, basically what attacker or pen tester need to do is to copy that, uh, uh, that source code pasted to, for example, Perl or Python compi compilator, and after a few changes, it is a very high chance that you get a nice exploit that can be used on your vulnerability. So, to summarize the first part regarding vulnerability scanner with expose, you can uh, you can uh, get a nice automation of. Uh, Vulnerability scans. Uh, there are tons of different vulnerability scans and predefined uh, templates. Like, for example, if you are under PCI or SOX uh, compliance audits, you can create a test for just for those kinds of activities. There is a very nice uh, template for, let's say, uh, critical environments like SCADAs and things like that. So, really nice. Uh, templates predefined and of course you can interact with them and create your own ones. With, uh, with enterprise version, the nice things is that you can uh, create uh, many different users, you can delegate duties for that users and with things like schedulers and multiple scans according to schedulers, each administrator immediately gets an information about new systems that are vulnerable uh, with ticket system built in, uh, so we can react really fast and we can start to work on, the, on our vulnerabilities uh, as soon as we are able to uh, recognize them. Okay, so that was the first and uh, second step of vulnerability cycle, so uh, finding vulnerabilities and creating some nice overview of them. The third part, I believe, is the hardest one and the sexiest one as well, uh, because right now we can try to hack something, okay? So with pro version of Metasploit and with uh, integration between Metasploit pro version and Nexpose VI API that is available inside that solutions, uh, we can create a really nice environment and what I will try to show you as a uh, practical example, we will try to get an information from our Nexpose vulnerability scanner. There will be a Metasploit table machine which is vulnerable for uh, example for something which is called Shellshock. Do you know Shellshock? That was a vulnerability from 2014, I guess. Uh, do you know uh, how does it work, more or less? Does anyone can tell us? So basically that was a bash vulnerability. Uh, that gives an attacker a possibility to inject some comments by using uh, the problem that was found inside a system, uh, system variables, basically, inside Unix and Linux machines. So uh, what you will see on the video, because I created video uh, for that scenario, uh, we will try to take advantage of that vulnerability by using something which is called DHCP client, because one of the possibilities to take advantage of that vulnerability was to use a DHCP server. So the first step uh, in my pretty nice web Metasploit Pro Console will be uh, importing information from Nexpose to Metasploit Pro. So they are already connected by using that, by using that API, so uh, I'm only selecting my console, I'm clicking import, and after a couple of seconds I will get all the vulnerabilities information inside my uh, Metasploit Pro console. So inside my testing environment there are more or less 50 hosts, some Linux, some Windows machines, some VMware servers, and uh, different kinds of different vendors. Vendors. We will be focusing on that Debian machine, which is Metasploit table machine. We can click on it. We can read what uh, 
ports, what services are available inside that machine. We can read about four vulnerabilities that I was uh, focusing on. Uh, so basically those four are connected to the Shellshock vulnerability. On the right side on my screen, you can see that sexy pop-up window with suggestion that there is a Shellshock module available inside Metasploit Pro, and all you need to do is to use it. So I decided to use the HCP module because it is really simple, and I think this is a nice example for uh, such a presentation. We'll be basically configuring uh, parameters for our DHCP server and the malicious part of that, uh, that uh, scenario will be that uh, besides all the IP address, masks and things like that information, we'll be also sending some additional information because as most of you, I'm sure you know that uh, we are able to serve a much more information by using the HCP server than just an IP address and, and mask, right? So what, uh, what will happen on the next step, uh, I will run uh, another Linux machine, that one uh, that is uh, vulnerable, and I will try to, con to um, discover uh, the HCP server, and if there will be one available, inside my network, I will try to get an IP address from it. So what you can see over here is just the DHCP discover, uh, and next if the HCP server is available, you can see the HCP request sent from that machine. Uh, our Metasploit do something like this, hey, I'm your DHCP server, here is your network card configuration, plus there is some additional stuff that I can give you. Uh, with uh, Shellshock vulnerability, our Linux machine will take care of those additional information and it will basically run all the kinds of different stuff that we would like to give to that uh, machine. So uh, what, that, uh, what that security module uh, is doing, it is creating a meterpreter session, so reverse connection to the command and control server. And right now we can use many of predefined scripts inside Metasploit. Uh, what I just clicked was a script that is called uh, collect system data, which is trying to collect things like uh, SSH key dumps, uh, hashes of passwords, uh, many different uh, configuration files and things like that. You can always use some additional modules, so you can try to install, let's say, VNC server on that machine, you can try to install Keylogger. If there is a machine with uh, built-in uh, microphone or webcam, you can try to interact with that hardware so you can take a picture or things like that. Uh, right now, you can see uh, situation after uh, that collect uh, data script. So there is, there are things like, uh, uh, just let me take a look, like uh, for example, shadow uh, file, so you got uh, hashes of passwords from users inside that operating system. There will be some information about uh, network card configuration, processes that are active inside that machine. Uh, basically any kind of interesting things that uh, potential attacker or pen tester uh, can be uh, looking for. And basically that's it for the uh, first part. We were able to find Shellshock vulnerability. We try to take advantage of this. So since we got Metapreter session, we can see that Shellshock is pretty serious one, so we should take care about it. But there is another problem inside our network. Uh, we can buy the most expensive ones, uh, the most expensive products that are available on the market like firewalls, IPS systems, sandbox environments and things like that. But if our users can't take care of themselves, uh, there is always problem inside our network. And what I would like to show you right now is another great feature of the pro version of Metasploit which is called uh, social engineering campaigns. So. With social generic campaigns, we will be able to create phishing attack, uh, campaign with drop by downloads uh, activity, we can create malicious USB sticks and things like that. But today I would like to focus on phishing campaign. 
Uh, please forgive me that uh, mail will that email will be in uh, Polish, but I didn't have much time to translate it to English, so I will translate it uh, right now. So we have four steps to configure our social engineering campaign. First, let's start with email itself. So. Just the basic information like subject of our email, uh, from address and from name that we will be spoofing on uh, during that campaign. Uh, my idea during that example is to send a user a message with information that he wants something uh, on some kind of Facebook contest. Things like, something like that. I can create a list of our recipients so uh, I can put them manually by uh, selecting uh, just a couple of options like email address, email, and things like that. If I'm doing that campaign on uh, a big company, I can always use CSV file to just import uh, thousands or uh, whatever number of uh, email addresses. One of the most important parts of that campaign will be an email content itself. So. Right now, you need to think for a while, figure out a nice scenario for your uh, phishing campaign. And what I'm writing here is just an information. Congratulations, user. You just won a nice uh, reward on Facebook. Please try to log into your Facebook account and just choose your reward. Something like this. So I'm creating a content of my email. I will put a link inside because my scenario will be to send email force user to click on that link, and next force him to provide a username password, uh, password and basically steal that information from my user. So email looks pretty much like this, just a signature at the end. We are saving the content. Uh, we can edit it by using plain text, there is a preview option, things like that, just to make sure that it looks legit. Second point will be to create a web page itself. Uh, just URL, nothing special. Uh, after form submission, redirect to URL. In my case, I will provide an original Facebook URL because um, in most cases, if user will enter username, password, and click to submit that form, he will be redirected to his uh, Facebook account, and since we are remembering all the passwords inside our browsers, it will be look like, yeah, it was, uh, it was correct login and correct password. So uh, another step is the possibility to clone website. So what I'm doing here, I'm cloning original Facebook site and it will be run on my web server here on uh, Metasploit machine. So I have my email, I have a website, just two technical parts like uh, mail server because I need to send those emails somehow. So just to make sure if we have connection to my Clico server, basically that's it. And the last step, just web server information. I will be using built-in Apache server inside our Metasploit Pro uh, installation. So basically what I need to do is to uh, choose a port and I can optionally serve SSL certificate if I want. I will run that campaign and we can wait for our users. Okay, just an information that I will really send those emails. So emails were sent. In task log, we can see information if everything works correctly or not. Uh, we can uh, check communication between our email client and email server. All emails have been sent, so looks pretty good. Uh, as you can see, I just received my email, so I have that content. I have my link, so I will click the link. I'm redirected to the page that was activated on my Apache server, so you, it looks like basically a legal Facebook page. I'm providing username password. I don't have a Facebook account, so it doesn't work. Uh, I just see a Facebook page. Uh, right now, typical user will try to provide another uh, user and password one more time and it will be logged in. 
but what we are looking for is finding section. With findings, I can uh, check how many recipients were targeted, how many recipients opened the email, how many recipients clicked the link inside that email, and finally, how many recipients submitted the form. By clicking details, I can check all the information about that form, of course, including our username password, so yeah, it works. Uh, our, we just, we just got an information about email and password. So as you can see, a pretty nice option to create a phishing campaign that you can run inside any organization. You can test your user by yourself uh, and basically prepare them for a real-time scenarios when attacker will be trying to use such a uh, campaign. So. To summarize, with Metasploit Pro, you are able to simulate all the kinds of attacks. Basically, you can create attacks. It's not just a simulation. You can do that attack. Uh, there is a nice exploit database. I believe that Metasploit is used by all the penetration testers around the world, unfortunately by hackers too. So it uh, looks like this. There is a nice integration with Nextpost by using API, and there are those really amazing security awareness tests that gives you a real chance to test your user, uh, users. Last thing during our uh, cycle is to create a nice remediation plans uh, to provide information for our administrators how they should take care of all kinds of problems that were discovered inside our environment. So what we can generate by using Metasploit Pro or Nexpose uh, installations, we can create a nice reports. Oh, cool. Uh, one of my favorite is something which is called remediation plan, which gives an administrator information like this. There are many vulnerabilities inside your network, but by applying 25 remediations from our list, you will be able to uh, deal with 97% of your vulnerabilities, and they are affecting one asset, my uh, one Metasploit table machine. In recommendation, you get information like you should upgrade uh, that uh, service. You should uh, install something new for that service. You also uh, get access to the reference links, so you can just click download the latest version and install it. If there is a problem with configuration itself, you can always uh, read an information that, for example, for your Samba, uh, you should go to that smb.conf file and you should uh, replace that configuration field with another one. For example, for uh, a next vulnerability in Samba, you should restrict anim anonymous access. To do that, again, you need to edit smb.conf file and replace uh, and replace your original configuration with something like this, for example. Okay, so as you can see by using those two tools, you should be able to cover all the steps from your vulnerability cycle. Basically, it looks like this. You got two tools, Metasploit Pro and Nexpose uh, engine. There is a third one, AppSpider, this is a really cool one if we are talking about web app tests. This is a dedicated scanner for web applications. So we can put a third icon here and here and here and here and here because AppSpartic gives you a chance to cover the whole cycle for web application. But since we are talking about Nexpose and Metasploit by using those two great tools, you will be able to cover the whole cycle, to identify your problems, to really test your environment, and finally, to create great remediation plan with all the steps uh, that can be sent to your users. Uh, that's it. I don't have more slides or videos, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Piotr. Here's a certificate. There you go. Congrats Thank on you. good presentation. Uh, do we have a quick question from the audience? Yes, we have one. Hi, Piotr. That was Hi. a very, very good presentation. I actually Thank really you. enjoyed it. 
And I had a one question in regards to the phishing campaign you showed about really when, you know, how you sort of do it really. It was a very interesting one. The question would be is, if the mail server has been configured for different SPF, DKIM, and the DMARC sort of settings really, would those emails actually still get through with the, to the users? No. Right, so what no, would you but, need to do? No, uh, but in that scenario, you are testing your own company, not attacking yeah. people. So I think you can create a configuration on your email server, yeah. configuration file to make sure that all the emails will be able to uh, reach the, the recipients. Right. If you are using Office 365, would that still be possible? Yes. Okay. Sure. Great. That's really brilliant. If you are attacking people, you need to think a bit more about yes. that scenario. <laughs> okay. Thank you.